about four minutes. Talk to us about your business. We are possibly one of the most well-known uh, design agencies within the entertainment industry. There was a lot that was said. I doubt he's going to remember everything going out. I think I pitched the business that we do run and what we do. So I guess it's up to you. Now that I got your attention, let's get down to business. We have a good season. We have a good business about 11. We have a good business about 50,000-run investment for our business. Winner takes all. We have a good business about 50,000 run investment for our business. Winner takes all. We have a good business about 50,000 run investment for our business. Winner takes all. We have a good business about 50,000 run investment for our business. I guess it took my Zigaba and Zusoma business weight. Lentis Wale, you could let a logician, Lassie Alexander. Entrepreneurs come in here all the time, yeah. and they've got big fancy words about like, you know, we want to create a saleable business, we want to make it sustainable, yeah. this, that. I think when he sets his mind to something, he's able to achieve what it is that he, he sets his mind to. Always have to be on your toes, you always have to think about what's the next step. Corporate wants entertainment. So look at how you match the two together and you can give corporate entertainment and you can give entertainment corporate. Hi, my name is Komoto Mautla. I run a boutique design agency called Green Robot Design. We're a very small digital design based agency based in Newtown. We're playing, I guess, in the media and entertainment sector. We know what we do. We're a small agency that definitely knows how to deliver on your briefs. So Wongkumut has got their own position and they yeah. do different things. When did you notice that the business is like this? I don't think you actually see it happening. You know, you don't say or be, you're not aware of it. It just happens and then you're like, okay, maybe there's something, you know. So, Ogamanji, I don't think we're at where we are in terms of success, but I've noticed that there's a lot of people who want to work with us because of the sort of level of work that we do. Yeah. yeah. Please just tell me, what do you do here at Green Robot? I am the um, the lead website developer. Mm. So if all the websites will go through me. Yeah, I definitely develop. Uh -huh. <laughs> Currently, what are you doing? What is this called? Is it editing or what is it? Oh, we call it title sequence. I'm working on a title sequence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for another client. So she needed. Uh, some images to move around and tell a story about the images. Oh, properly. So yeah, that's what we're doing. With the industry sevens like you and yeah, shinja shinja. It's very competitive as well. Have you come up with ways to make sure Wuti, you know, you stay a cut above the rest? And for Wuti, you know, Jongoba, often Kulising Kampaniako, we turn to the next level of the digital space. Easy peasy, not soon as come again as or some of the things that you've started thinking of. Look, I think it is very, very um, competitive. Um, and there's a lot of people playing in the same space. And I think Nako and I were very small, so there's a lot of small players in this space. Yeah. You know? So it's always good to try and. Um, advance yourself yes, and be different, you know? And I think we're different because we're young, mm -hmm. you know? And I guess because we're also a very predominantly black team, mm -hmm. uh, well, if not all black. <laughs> all black. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that 
that sort of almost gives us an edge. But we are really creative also, mm -hmm. you know. And I think playing in the digital space, we need to then start thinking about where and how we can advance ourselves and do the R&D that's needed, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and also, I just think coming up with new ideas, fresh ideas, mm -hmm. and pitching them to clients and stuff like that. So it's always, you have, always have to be on your toes. You always have to think about what's the next step. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't stay stagnant in a world that's ever changing, you yes, know. Sir. Yeah. When I started my business and I asked friends, you know, who can I get in touch with to set up a website and to do everything, you know, everybody referred me to, to Green Robot. I would say Green Robot is client-centric. They break China for the client. They go beyond the call of duty and I definitely don't, uh, don't regret the, the choice I made. Um, so yeah, so it's been a great working relationship for the past year. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, the industry who you, one would say, I'm a client, are people that will come in, I'll ask you to do something for me, and then I'm gone and then I pay you your money and that's that. <laughs> yeah. But for you, how do you keep a business here going? And you know, what type of clients do you have? I'm a short term, I'm a very short term, I'm a short term, I'm a short term, I'm a short term, I'm a short term. I think, look, Kona, there's different clients, yeah. you know, with different services um, and different requirements. Yes, so sir. I think, Right now, we've got a lot of clients who are looking for the long term. Yeah. You know, in the long term, it always makes sense because you build relations, and this is what business is about, yeah. building the long term relations that yes, people can work with you on in the long term. You yeah. know? Um, so there's different clients that we do have. Some walk-ins mm -hmm. who are sort of just once off, and yeah. do their work, and they're happy with the work. Mm -hmm. and then maybe they'll come back in a couple of months' time. Yeah. But the point is to try and get them to work with you for a longer period of time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, my client, mm. A lot of celebrities, we've done stuff for Spare Naves, yes. uh, Lulo Cafe, mm -hmm. uh, Kulichana. Yes, sir. Um, dimples, we do a lot of dimples, DJ Dimples' work. Uh-huh. Um, sure, there's a lot. Um, please tell me a bit about your working relationship that you have with Green Robot. So I have a blog called The Josie Foodie Fix and I was looking to get someone to do some work for my total website design, including hosting. And I got a recommendation from another blogger, Wasal, oh. who'd used Green Robot before and she said they're cost effective, they do great work. Highly responsive. So um, what have you found about his services, you know, the services that they offer to you? Outside of what you pay for. If I have problems now, and it's been like three, four months down the line, they're still responsive. I say, look, mm -hmm. this is happening. I don't understand what I'm supposed mm -hmm. to do. Can you take a look at it? So for me, that's the most important thing mm -hmm. that I value yeah. from what Humutz has been able to do is that his ethos is embodied in his employees mm -hmm. as well. You want to own your own creative product. Yeah. What products are you thinking of? Here's where it all began. Um, um, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, and So I think, like any average township, it's 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 really nice, interactive, lots of friends. So I really enjoyed my upbringing in in Alexandra. Growing up with Komoto was um, fun, it was interesting. We were the only two in, in the family. We were together in the life um, was, I, I think, more privileged than, than some of the friends that I grew up with. 
I've been in, in private schooling, fortunately, because of, of my parents since I was in grade one. Khumatana's upbringing is a classic township upbringing. Um, the corner would be the place to go after school. If you had any chores, obviously, you'd do that. Homework was never ever done, obviously, because um, Homoto and I, we're not really bright students. Homoto Mayeti, a creta u metriketu uyo wenza e graphic design, a fourteen, a siazi, e life yama artist, a wabam nantuti. But influenced by art in So, I excellent you to see When Homunso dropped out, she, she may have been a little bit disappointed. Dropping out the first time was, I guess, a big shocker for both Abba's album um, because they, they didn't expect it to, to happen. My mom persuaded me to go back to school the second time, um, where I, I dropped out again uh, at the end of the first year. My mom zali u ugui profession ya ye etile. Ma uso wia zikuti injani inzi maganjani. Ufisi ngata mandoa na bako bangenza eni teshugil. I dropped out of varsity twice, not because I wanted to, but because. After the second time, I realized that schooling wasn't for me and formal education wasn't necessarily for me. Or maybe it's because I chose something that I thought you didn't need to go to school for, you know. I understand that the reason is that the school is good for my practicals, but what is the theory that I born with it? Because you see your hands with and abandoning by failing in the creative industry. I think we are privileged in the sense that we, we come from a family that has always kind of let us do what fulfills us and what we think is the best for us. The amazing thing about our stories at the corner and the red container is that everything that we discussed as friends is happening today. I think when he sets his mind to something, he's able to achieve what it is that he, he sets his mind to. His bad traits are that he doesn't really speak out. You know, some people might construe it as a strength, but I think he, he takes on a lot on his shoulders and sometimes forgets to ask for help. I like to go through or walk the path by myself and understand what I'm going through by myself rather than sort of putting it out there. Work hard. You must never give up in your life, man. In Kumbula, in Jamaica, in Kampan, in Omganwake. Uguti ba beza muktola maka ma babu ya beza gi me ba ba zobo zuti singal biza. We were at one stage called Mushroom Jam. This is a good green robot. We are going to angela maka. And then one day, uh, when we were still students, we were driving back home in a taxi, and the robot went green. And then the name Green Robot actually literally stemmed from that. Mutsu had never been a person, not to say Haratibana, but he didn't just have that interaction, Libana, and Neo's arrival had just changed everything about him. I think Mutsu is a baba, a First day, Mutsu changed the nappy. And they respond very well when he comes in. I guess he becomes the cool dad, you know. She responds to seeing the phone and cameras now because the first thing that Papa Khae Ayirang when he comes in is actually take a picture of her. So she, she knows how to smile because of daddy. develop an understanding between him and Mutana. He's always been an influencer. 
You know, he's the type of guy that you automatically gravitate towards. And that's in a nutshell what I can say about him. I'm creative. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I'm not too sure. I, I guess I'm a, sometimes a good listener. Um, I, yeah, I sort of give advice where and when I can. He knows what he's talking about. He hates being wrong. Um, he hates it. The graphic design. In Kunle no mkute lano omningi ga cool. Uyabon. Zine ingi inkampa nige langa pale zafufuz. E seven zangu na lumkaka. Umanga be wena funu pumele lu seven zangu na lingunz. Kumele lu seven zangu kuluwi misel. Jenga manje upepsu kwa kusana no humuzo, opumale e green robot. Ufuna ugu uzo wuti ingabe na lentizo, inalo iswe lkwinili. Elzo kwa azu kumsiza wuti business like linton globali. I'm here to see Pepsi. Not too sure how to feel. I think I'm a bit nervous, but very excited. But yeah, let me go see what's happening. In the hot seat with me today is one of Josie's hottest graphic designers. You may have seen the work that he does for different artists in the entertainment industry. He's here to tell me today how he intends to grow his business. Humoto, welcome to Making Moves, bro. Thank you, thank you, Pepsi. Shop, shop. Take a seat, man. Thanks. So, Andre, so how does a young man from Gomorrah end up in the graphic design business? I guess it's more passion and, and knowing what you want. And what are the personal reasons? Why did you start this business? What were you hoping to get out of the business? I wanted to create something that would be mine uh, and something that I could almost leave a legacy, you know. So, um, I guess the financial freedom and being able to, I guess the creative freedom, and you're so confined within a job that sometimes you don't have the creative freedom that you want. So out of those three, which one are you getting right now? Have you got financial freedom? Is the business making money for you? Are you happy? Look, the financial freedom part is still a work in progress. You know, especially as, um, as, as a creative or as a designer, you always concentrate on the creative aspect of your company and not necessarily the financial or the business side of it. So I'm in the process of learning how to actually run my business a bit better uh, and be able to make, I guess, management decisions a bit better. Whereas when I first started, it was just about how do I get the work out there? If I get paid, do I get paid? And that type of thing. So it's now more of a learning process on how do I get the financial freedom out of my business. What are you actually doing in order to take care of the business aspects? Uh, uh, of your business? I think for me it's always been, and like I was saying, it's just how it's about creating the work and not necessarily thinking about the long term of the business. So you do the work because it's something that you're doing for now and not thinking about what's your three year plan, what's your five year, what's your 10 year plan. And that's where now I'm learning to say, okay, for me to be able to sustain this business, I need to have five-year contracts or I need to have 10-year contracts and that type of thing. And I've never thought about it that way. It's only, I guess, in the past two years where I've said, okay, I want to retire off this business or I want to sell this business. So how do I make it a viable business for someone to either buy into or to buy over or for me to say, okay, let the business run by itself without me. Entrepreneurs come in here all the time yeah. and they've got big fancy words about like, you know, we want to create a saleable business, mm -hmm. wanna make it sustainable, yeah. this, that. And it's very rare that I've, I've got a really solid plan that I hear from someone, mm -hmm. okay, this is what I intend to do. So you are now talking to three things. Yeah. One, you're talking long-term contracts. Yeah. I think you're off your tree if you think anyone's giving three, five or 10 year mm -hmm. contracts anymore. Those days are gone, yeah. that's just a personal, personal opinion. Yeah. Intellectual property, let's start there. So you want to own your own creative product yeah. that you can own and you can sell and can continue making money into the future yeah. so that you've got something that you can actually sell to someone and say, here's a product that yeah. I can sell to you. What products are you thinking of? Look, I think right now we're in a transition within the business um, from a traditional graphic design company and trying to move into more of a digital space. So like I was saying is that we, we're still working on, on trying to develop the IP. We don't really know what we want yet. And I, 
I guess we're, we're at a good pace or a good stage in the business in that we're still trying to find our feet as much as we've been around for a couple of years. But this transition is allowing us to say, what can we start creating within the business that will now become a sort of integral part of this business? And especially because we want to now start playing in the digital space more than the traditional print, billboard and that type of space. What stuff can we do within the R&D that we're doing that will sustain us in the long term? What it sounds like is you want to offer more services to your existing clients in the entertainment industry, yeah. but you also want to get out of the entertainment industry and expand your client base. Yeah. What are some of the challenges with, with both of these things at the moment? When you start off, I guess, with the business, people know you for a certain thing. And the way I started the business was that I was the go-to guy for flyers. So in some people's minds, I'm still the same guy who is you can do a flyer, you know? So I guess breaking that mold and saying that, look guys, I don't only do flyers, I do ABC on top of that. That's almost become the most difficult part because even then the rates weren't what the rates are now. So you find a lot of people are complaining that you're either too expensive or you're not turning around the work as quick as you used to. And I guess back then it was just by myself, but now there's processes within the business to say, you can't get your flyer within 24 hours, but you'll get your flyer within 48 hours. You know, So right now that's the problem with the existing clients. And I guess breaking into, into the new or the other markets is that our portfolio is of a certain market and now trying to break into a sort of corporate market, they're looking at all these either flyers or entertainment or DJs or whatever, and like, but you might not fit what we're looking for. So that's sort of the thing. But I guess over and above, it's always about saying design is design. It's not necessarily um, about me designing for a Kulichana or whoever. It's about me making form that functions and it's about the design aspect. I can design a corporate website or I can design an entertainment website. It's the basics of design. What is the brief and just meeting the brief. You sound like you're trying to do a lot though. There's the IP side, trying to build products, intellectual property so that you can build a business that's not dependent on clients or, or corporates or entertainment or artists, you know, so you've got a product that can sell yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. You want to break into the corporate market and you're struggling to do that because people see you as an entertainment company. Mm -hmm. Your current clients see you growing bigger than what they are comfortable with. Yeah, they yeah. want to keep you in a hole so that they can pay you a small mm -hmm. amount of money and you can be at their beck and call 24-7. Yeah. You've got a few different challenges. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to send you off to have a chat to a mate of mine and uh, come back and see if anything's shifted and whether you've gotten any new ideas after this uh, coaching session. Okay. Humoza is not just about drawing pretty pictures, he also has a vision for his business. To help him get closer to reaching that vision, Making Moves has invited Lucas Boloi, founder and chief executive officer of the Junto Group, for this coaching session. Um, yeah, that was an interesting talk with Pepsi. Um, I think I'm ready for my coaching session. Let's see. But you are in business. business yeah. You're in business to make money, not to have fun. True. You know, fun is part of it. Make it move. Make it move. Kubo yangu ati business laka kumuto lizagari. Footy. Ingatu na wogama kringa mbalo zom siza uguta njoto bali se i business laki. Gotwa i kona ge imkomek mela ilandel. Uguza kwa zuguti business laki li fige la kona ge yena. Efunu guti li fige kwa. I guess we're going to coaching session here. I am beginning. Entrepreneurs are smart risk takers, but they need someone with the knowledge to guide their steps in the right direction. Let's meet this week's coach. My name is uh, Lucas uh, Molloy. I am the founder of the organization called uh, the Junto Group. The Junto Group itself was founded in uh, say about 2004, and we've been evolving around the years in that. I'm very involved uh, with uh, entrepreneurship in the country. As the organization also, the business is really built on the model of improving entrepreneurship in the country. 
entrepreneur. So when an entrepreneur has got a business and that, it is very difficult for them to secure a board. What we do, we then come in as the Vogue Advisory Board and we become advisory board to them. People don't do business with companies. People do businesses with other people. Innovation, innovation, innovation. If the organization is not innovative, then it is busy dying. That is one element that I need to see in every organization that I deal with. What is it that is, is, is your focus? Look, and I think there's a lot of, almost a lot of confusion and you're not the first one to bring it up. Mm. And this is why we've tried to consolidate and this is the transition that we're going through as a company, okay. is that we are now trying to sort of align ourselves and to sort of narrow down to what our core focuses should be. Mm -hmm. Right now, we will just do design, we will do um, development of websites and online, and we'll do multimedia. Okay. The business itself has been running now for seven years or eight years. Yeah. The turnover of the business, around 100K and then. Why are you sitting with that small more. turnover? I think for more, most part is that the company only started growing in 2012. Okay. That's when the business started, so it's what, maybe three, two and a half years now. And I guess also the positioning. We've positioned ourselves, and I guess because of people and the industry, we've positioned ourselves in sort of a lower level market. When I read the profile, one of the questions was, what makes you unique? You know, what, what, what is your winning point? What, what's that differentiating factor uh, between you and others? Um, what came out was the word cool. <laughs> so um, I sit and look, you want to move also into the space of corporate. Yes. In the space of entertainment and that, cool may Worse. cut it. Yeah. But if you are going to move in the space of corporates and that, we need something a little bit stronger than that. Mm -hmm. What is it that, why should I come to you instead of going to the next person? And that's what, that's what needs to come out very clear in that. You probably started that business because you were good in graphic designing after school. So you came after college and that, you were good in graphic designing and then you thought, you know what, I want to do this and plus I want the freedom of, of design, the free financial freedom. And, and you started your own thing. Mm -hmm. He's driven. Um, he loves what he's doing. I'm just worried that he's more passionate about being a graphic designer than being an entrepreneur. If a certain sector doesn't make sense financially, it may give fun, but you are in business. Yes, yeah. You're in business to make money, not to have fun. True. You know, fun is part of it, but we want the main goal to be making money and that. So we may need to change. I would like you to start looking at that and changing that. Uh, is Homoto able to shift from a graphic designer to an entrepreneur? Possible. But it is going to take an effort out of him in that. Um, he's going to have to train himself to look at things easier. He's going to have to, to start looking at a client, not, not as a designer that has to give something to the client, but as an entrepreneur who wants to retain the client and, and, and that's the shift he needs to take. The turnover might be low because the pricing is not right. Um, don't be necessarily someone that the, the clients come to because you are cheaper. You don't want that. Yeah. You don't want to be the one that clients are coming because you are cheaper. You want to be the one that the clients are coming because you are convenient, you are dynamic, you deliver on time and that. You may not necessarily be the cheapest, but you are the best. Yeah. I need you to start going to look at and say, if I was to sell this business and I had only 30 seconds to sell this business. What are the ways that I'll say this business is? What is going to make, and don't think of it as an entrepreneur, think of it as an investor. If you were an investor and someone in a graphics field came and wanted to sell their business to you, what is it that you would want to buy? You need to build a very strong profile. At this moment, you, you have got a, an entertainment profile that is there. You've done work in that space. You've done great work in that space. Don't be afraid to present that to business because business wants to associate with the entertainment industry because that's where people are sitting. Corporate wants entertainment. So look at how you match the two together and you can give 
corporate entertainment and you can give entertainment corporate. So that is sort of what you, I would like you to start to start investigating and looking at. Um, I think there were a lot of things that Lucas spoke about that I had been thinking about but hadn't started really applying them into the business. So instead of you going out and looking what other more services can I venture into, I would like to see you looking at how do I bring these sectors together to build something greater. I don't know if I'm making sense no, you to are, you, in that, you in, the, in, that, in that end. The coaching session for me was insightful. I hope he would be he would be ready for the pitch. I was a little bit worried that he didn't uh, even have an old pet or anything to take notes in that. Um, there was a lot that was said. I doubt he's going to remember everything going out. And tomorrow's pitch, I think you should expect, I guess, firstly, honesty. <laughs> honesty. Um, I think also expect to to get a bit of insight into what the future goals are of the business. Making moves. Making moves has a prize valued at 50,000 Rand to invest into a business. 12 young entrepreneurs will get a chance to showcase their businesses. Each entrepreneur will be given a chance to pitch for this investment to our panel of judges. The judges will use their own discretion to pick the top four businesses to go into our final episode where they will compete for this grand prize. You too can be part of this exciting opportunity for young entrepreneurs. Making moves. Are you ready? I am. I'm ready. What to pet a loot on your lot? I collect your pet. Yeah. Is all a Siboni coaching session. Are you going to incorporate anything or it will be a pioneer or those with Faganam Clanji with each other? I think most definitely there's a lot of stuff that I've got from my coaching session, is all that I think I'm, I'm, I put together within the pitch for today, so I'm ready with that, and I think, yeah, we're good to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. When the robot goes green, it means proceed. Good go. All the best. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Sure. Roberto would probably open up his laptop and just show you the work, and by doing that, he will win the pitch. Good day, judges. Good day, Humoto. Good to see you again, brother. Thank you. Good to see you too. You've got four minutes. Talk to us about your business. Okay. Um, my name is Humoto. I own and run a company called Green Robot Design, a boutique design and digital agency based in Newtown. Um, my business predominantly works and plays around the entertainment space, providing design solutions for various clients. We are Possibly, we are possibly one of the most well-known uh, design agencies within the entertainment industry. We offer a wide, a wide variety of, of services, multimedia, web development, design, strategy, and so forth. Uh, our team encompasses of a young team of creative um, people who are um, young, black, and know what they're doing. We are, I think, one of the... Ooh, Sorry. Um, I think we are, we are the best people within our business right now because we understand what our clients need. We understand what branding is, we understand what design is, and most, most importantly, we understand what communication is. Um, I'd like to take you through sort of our portfolio right now and some of our clients that we have worked with. In the past, we've been able to work with the market theater, um, black women developers and professionals, some clients like Red Bull, Black Magazine, uh, JR and Gawe investments and so forth. Um, and I'll just take you through our portfolio just so you can see some of the stuff that we have done. So this is some of our logo development work. This year we created for VAL, which is the VITS radio station. Uh, they asked us to create um, a logo element for their radio station, which was rebranding at that time. And they wanted to reintroduce this to their market and to some of the students within the varsity. And this is sort of the solution that we came up with. And over here, we've got Maftown Heights, which is uh, an ongoing event that is hosted in Newtown, which is close to us, which is, has become very popular in the past few years. 
and we are responsible for some of the work that we do with them, which is the whole collateral. And this is what we like to do with some of our clients, that we want to go through a whole design process with them, which I guess in, in, in hindsight makes it work for us because we are then building long-term relations with some of our clients. And this is some of the logo design that we've also done, some popular clients that you might know, Naves, Oskido, uh, Spectacular, and so forth. Um, and some of the print media work that we are now trying to phase out because we've understood that print doesn't stand, not that it doesn't stand a chance, but it slowly is being phased out. But this is some of the print media work that we've done just to show that we are able to still communicate effectively within the media space. And this is some of the CI work that we have done. But more importantly, what I wanted to show you and wanted to tell you is that we are now moving from what is now traditionally a print and graphic design company into more of a digital and animation company. And that's what I'm going to show you now. This is our showreel right now. So this is some of the work that we have done in the past. And what we wanted to do with the showreel is just to show you how we move from some of the logos you would have seen within the presentation, but this is how we've made some of the elements move and this is our showreel for what we're doing now. And why, why I think we should or we would be um, the best people to, or the best company to sort of um, be invested in or to win the, 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 the grand prize is because it's not necessarily about what we're... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you. Stop me. Your time is up. Um, you spent a lot of time talking about wow. the work and showing us examples of your pretty pictures, mm -hmm. um, but we spent very little time talking about the business itself. Um, but hopefully that'll come through with some Discussion. of the questions that come from my co-judges, Martin, Lucas. Have you guys got any questions? I'll start with you, Martin. Thanks very much. Please touch on your last year's um, financials uh, returns. Um, 2013 to 2014. Yeah, please. 2013 to 2014 was, I guess, one of our sort of best financial years in that we, we did it just over bar, I think 1.2, 1.3, which for us was very good because in that time, in that period when we, I guess, achieved all of that, that was when we were trying to scale up within the company. So we moved from having very minimal low overheads to then getting an office and to hire two or three more staff members within that year. Where did the bulk of this 1.3 million in turnover come from? So what are the big, call it two drivers that um, generated the most revenue? Um, design, which is obviously what we've been known for, and web development and digital. So in that year, we added on quite a lot of services. We were traditionally known as a graphic design company, but we added on a lot of services within sort of the strategy, uh, how to launch websites, when to launch websites, uh, how to come up with communi communi strategic communication when people are launching events and that type of stuff. So we found that between the design and the web development, there was a big increase. And I guess that's a trend within the market. From the money that you've made in that, what was your profit margins? I think our profit margin was just over 200K, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which I, I'm not too phased about and I'm not beating myself over because it's something that we are working on. And I guess because of the, the changes that have happened within the company between 2013 and 2015, it's something that we are looking at closely and trying to see how we can manage that and obviously look at what has worked, what doesn't work, what needs to fall off and where we can scale up from there. What will winning the prize do for the business? I'm looking at more of a scalable model and more of an internship model. So winning the prize would mean I would want to buy more equipment and more, um, again, I guess more equipment, more computers to take on a lot more interns. We're finding that we have a lot of people coming in who are wanting to either intern or work for the company, but they aren't, well, we might not have sufficient computers and so forth. And I guess for me, it's always about upskilling the next person to either start or maybe take over my job or to start their own thing and then just create an economy within the design sector. Fantastic, your time is up. Um, I know Martin's about to hit you with another question, but give us a few minutes to deliberate and then I'll call you back in. 
so that we can give you our feedback in terms of what we think about your business. All right. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you. I think the pitch went really well. Um, I think I did stumble a bit, but I, I think I got my point across. I think I would have shortened it a bit more in terms of the work that I showed, like Pepsi had said. But I think also, if we don't sell the visual, um, we're not selling who we are, and that's how we sell ourselves. We heard the pitch. What do you guys think? Does he come back and be a part of that final four that will pitch right at the end for the grand prize? Look, for me, uh, I don't want to be biased, you know. So he says, I want to scale this business. I want to start going to corporates and that. But I feel that there is no strategy in doing that. He hasn't thought about it on how he's going to do it. I think he still needs a bit of time. Martin? My five cents, the first impression I got was that he's a creative and he really hasn't taken the reins in terms of the business. When you're wanting to do a, an expansion plan in your business, you need to know exactly where you are and have clear direction on where you're needing to, to end up. I'm also with you that I didn't get that clear indication of this is where I am, these are the target markets I'm wanting to target, and this is how I'm going to get there. Passion, it's there. Innovation, it's not. In today's world, does the business need only passion? Successful businesses are built on innovation. I'm not getting that. I would like to work a little bit more with him, but this is a competition. I don't think he's going to win the money, but I think the best thing we could do for him is to give him an opportunity to go and answer the questions and put him on the spot once again later on in, in, in the series. And in that way, he will have learned a lot from answering yeah. those questions. And I yeah. think that would be the most valuable yeah. thing for him. Yeah. He's yeah. passionate, yeah. and that's what I like you about can, him. Yeah, you can definitely see the passion in his work. He's very good at what he does. Mm. You know, we've got to give credit where credit's due. <laughs>and I'm not sure where the innovation is. It's a very congested space with lots of competitors, lots of young black guys, because the barrier to entry is low. You just need a few Macs and some software and you can get started. So I'd like you to do a few things. The first one is a proper strategy on how you're going to grow. How are you gonna be finding this new business? How are you getting these corporate pitches? Are you registering on their databases as suppliers? Um, are you approaching, or as a supplier, are you approaching enterprise development engines and seeing if you can't get into corporates that way? What are you doing? I'd also like you to go and see three ad agencies yeah. and attempt to sell your services to them. I'd like you to see three TV production companies and attempt to sell your services to them because I think you can design TV shows from a look perspective right down to the animation and the title sequences, etc., etc. I'd like you to do those three things and see what impact that has on your business. I speak purely from a financial perspective. So as an investor, something that's very important to me, first of all, is financial soundness of a business. Um, I would have liked more meat around that um, and not the I think approach 
that, um, that you have. What's very important for me is that you transition from the creative into a business mindset. You know, maybe just get some books, re read up about business strategies, etc. You're a great creative. Um, I just think that, that your business skills need to be brushed up a bit. Um, it's not uncommon in the, in the creative space. I see this all the time. You guys get quite absorbed into the creative side of things. And, but we need to remember that the business side of things is vitally important um, for robust expansions. In your pitch that stood out for me was your internship program. So it just shows me that um, you know you are you get up to give back. That's very important to an investor. So maybe just ex explain more how you will be strategizing getting new you know and what your internship process will be, what you'll be taking your interns through, and also remember that as an intern. Um, you're going to be ha you're going to have to be business savvy in order to to guide and mentor that person. Okay. Omaso, the things that still impress me about the business is you've done work in your industry. Um, you are known in your industry. You you've done you've done good work. You've got good clients and that. The internship program and that brilliant. Um, uh, meet up with MICT CETA. They are in your industry and that. Speak with them and that, and they will be able to fund the program that you want to do. So, um, you know, for me, that, that is the thing. In the presentation that you did, uh, it didn't have the punch. You know, it lacked that punch. You didn't come out strong as the, as the creative that you are. When I have to invest in the business, I sit and look at the business and I say, you don't have the board, you don't have people that you're answerable to. If you get this price money, the choice on what you do with this money lies entirely on you. If you decide, you know what, I'm not going to use it for the business, I now need an upgrade on the car, that would happen because you don't have people that you are answerable to. So like I said yesterday, structure it to sell it. If you do that, and then you would be able to attract uh, investors. Okay, so I'm going to give you feedback. Um, the consensus as a group is no. Um, we're looking for four finalists who we feel will benefit from, from this cash injection the most. Cool. Guys, yeah. thank you very much. I mean, solid feedback. Khumuzov, thank you for coming to share your business with us you. and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. My making movies experience has been interesting, uh, very insightful. I've learned a lot. Um, I've seen a lot of I guess, behind the scenes with, with the show, but I've also learned a lot about myself, about my business, and what I should be doing with my business.